Hi, hey, grade 10s. Uh, this is our second part for the lesson uh, for today. And here's where we're going to take the rules for converging mirrors and diverging mirrors, the ray rules, and I'm going to show you how you can figure out where the image is and then be able to describe that image. Remember how we described images using that acronym SALT? Same thing is going to happen here, okay? So we did this when we did our plane mirror and it was really quite easy, right? Because every time the image is pretty much right the same. It doesn't change as you move the plane mirror towards you or away from you. But here's what does change. Where that image is and what that image looks like changes depending on where the object is. So again, I could use a pen as my object. I could use um, anything. I can use an arrow as an object. You can use yourself as the object. In this case, we're just going to use this little black stick with a gray tip. You can make it like an arrow top on it. As long as you know where the top and the bottom are, you can follow the ray rules to talk about where that image is, okay? And if you have a chance to look at the diverging and converging mirrors, you can simply look at yourself and see what happens as that object is farther away or closer to the mirror. You can see how the image is going to change, okay? So that's kind of fun. All right, there are rules for what happens and how you draw the incident rays and the reflected rays, okay? We'll follow the rules, and then once we get to the practice sheet, which will be on the back here, then you're going to see that it will work for two of the ray rules, so you can use any of the four that we learned on the first page in order to figure out where the image is going to be of the object that you've got. Okay, so what are we doing? We're finding and describing the image using a converging mirror first, and then we're gonna do the rules for diverging mirrors. Okay, follow along, make sure you write down these rules on a separate sheet of paper or on the note if you've got the note. You're gonna use your ruler every single time in your sharp pencil, and you wanna be very exact. You wanna use those things, the rules you learn about in physics, these are the rules. We're starting them now in grade 10. Okay, ray rule number one. If you have a light ray that's parallel to the principal axis, it will get reflected through the focal point. Okay, how do we know that? Well, we remember that the focal point is between the center of curvature and the vertex when you have a concave, a converging mirror. And all we're doing is we're gonna show from the very tip top of the object, right? This is my object right here. And again, if you want to draw an arrowhead at the top to make this be able to see where the top is and the bottom of it is, that's, that's perfect, okay? You're going to show a light ray going through the from the very top of the object, and then you're going to follow the incident ray and the reflected ray. So here we go, first one. Uh, incident ray that is parallel to the principal axis, do it as best you can will get reflected through the focal point. There we go. That's the first ray rule. You're going to use two of them to figure out where that image is going to be when you shine light from an object, right? Object onto the mirror and reflect it. Incident ray, reflected ray. Let's move on to rule number two. Rule number two, a light ray that goes through the focal point will get reflected parallel to the principal axis. Here we go. Start at the top. If you have a ray that is exactly, right, use your ruler, goes right through the focal point towards the mirror, it will get reflected how? Parallel to the principal axis. Oh, that doesn't look very good on my, no, you get the idea. If I had a ruler and I wasn't just using my pen, my finger, I would definitely make sure that that is parallel. Let's move on. Ray rule number three. If you have a light ray that goes through the center of curvature, can you picture that? Okay, light ray through the center of curvature. Imagine that my my, my mirror extends all the way down because it would go all the way down and around. It's just a little bit limited here by the fact that I've got this image on my note. If it goes through the center of curvature, then what does it do? The curvature is at the center of the circle. If the mirror was extended around the object, if you threw a ball from the exact center, what would happen? It would come straight back to you. So the incident ray follows the same path 
as the reflected ray. Very cool. Last ray rule. A light ray aimed at the vertex will follow the law of reflection. The angle of incidence will equal the angle of reflection and you've got the normal which would end up being the principal axis all the way along. So here we go. If a light ray goes from my object directly to the vertex, it follows the law of reflection, and I would use my protractor to do this exactly. I am eyeballing that, but you're going to use your protractor, measure that angle of incidence, which is right here, make the angle of reflection equal to it, and draw your reflected ray in. Okay, those are the rules for how light goes. Now we need to have two of these ray rules in order to figure out where the tip top of that object image is going to be. Here we go. Let's use an object this time, which is a little guy here with a hat. So we've got the top of our object and the bottom of our object, okay? Use the ray rules to describe the image formed when the reflected rays converge. And that is how it works. You need two incident rays going in, two reflected rays coming out, and where the two reflected rays meet, that is going to be the tip top of the object, but now it's the image. And then we're going to take that image, we're going to look at it, and we're going to describe it using salt. What's the size? What's the attitude? What's the location? And what's the type of image? And if you need to review that again, go back to yesterday's lesson and review. Okay, so here we go. Let's take, and it doesn't matter which rules you use, let's just take the first one if we want one parallel in. So let's say we have a ray and I take from the tip top of his hat. I have an incident ray that is parallel to the principal axis. How does it reflect? It reflects, look back at your rule if you need to, through the focal point. Okay, draw. Just extend it down as far as you need because you're not sure where that other reflected ray is going to end up and you need those two lines to cross. So again, you're using your ruler exactly perpendicular, exactly through that focal point and where it crisscrosses and meets the other reflected ray, that's going to be our object hat. The tip top of that hat is going to be the object, okay? Where they meet will be our image. So let's take another one, another ray. Let's do the one through the focal point. That's an easy one. So I take from the same spot. If you have an incident ray that goes through the focal point, what's the rule? It gets reflected how? Parallel to the principal axis. Okay, my incident ray has been drawn. I'm now going to draw my reflected ray that's parallel to the principal axis, and here is where the image will be. Where those two reflected rays meet, that is going to be my little guy's hat. Oh my gosh, now I've got to draw them upside down, right? Because look, that image will be inverted. It's smaller than my object. It's between the center of curvature and the focal point, and this image is going to be what we call a real image because this image is in front of the mirror, and if I had a screen set up, I could capture that image on a piece of paper or a screen. You're going to have to watch the video for that so you can see the candle flame. And I want you to look very carefully to see if that candle flame is inverted or upright, right? Is it the right side up or is it inverted? If you had a little guy and we actually did this in the lab, if it was dark enough and my light source was bright enough, I could actually capture that image on a piece of paper in the lab, okay? I could do that. Now we describe the image. And again, what did we say? We said he was smaller. That's the size. The attitude upside down. You could also just say inverted. Okay, the location is between the center of curvature and the focal point. And what type of image? If the reflected rays meet in front of the mirror, it is always a real image.
Okay, when we did plane mirrors, do you remember what that was like? I keep trying to pick up this mirror again. When we did our plane mirrors, my image is always behind the mirror. Okay, now you may say, oh, but I see myself there. Uh-huh, but if I turned the lights down and the light was bright enough off of me, I can capture that image in front of the mirror and I will be upside down. Okay, that's what that means. I'll show you what that looks like when we get there. Let's do the second one. All right, what if that object is at the center of curvature? See how there's all these different examples? You're gonna do all these examples. If my object right here is at the center of curvature, let's use two of the ray rules to figure out where my image is. I'm gonna take a ray, incident ray parallel, gets reflected how? through the focal point. Let's take another incident ray, reflect or shine it through the focal point. How does it get reflected? It gets reflected parallel. And then guess what? Where these two crisscross produces the top of my image. And you can see my little guy is exactly the same size, just inverted. Let's describe the image, right? My image is inverted, same size, at the center of curvature, and again, this is a real image, okay? For the sake of time, I'm not going to write all this in, but you can certainly check my solution set if you need to, to be able to correct yours. Let's look at the next um, option. What if we move our object now towards the focal point, okay? So if we move them inside and this object is between the C and the F, let's do the ray rules and see where they are going to meet. Again, we're looking for where the reflected rays meet. That is going to be the top of the image if I shine my, ray, my rays from the top of my object. Parallel through the focal point, through the focal point, parallel, they meet down here and then your, um, your image goes upside down, it's larger, isn't it? You could use your ruler if you need to, but I can eyeball that and say it's larger. Inverted, outside of the curvature, and this again is a real image. It's real because it is focused in front of the mirror and I could capture that image on a piece of paper or a screen. And honestly, you just hold the piece of paper up and you can actually see it and you can see that that's gonna be upside down. All right, last option. Oh no, sorry, two options. What if our object is at the focal point? Okay, can you see right there? What's going to happen? A light ray that goes parallel gets reflected through the focal point. Let's try the, another ray rule that we hadn't done before. Can you see this one where I've got, what if I've got one that goes through the center of curvature towards the mirror, bounces back? If the object is at the focal point, can you see an image? No. Why? Because those reflected rays never meet. In the lab, can you try this? 100%. You're going to walk towards the concave mirror, and when you get to the point where you cannot see yourself, bingo, you know that you're standing at the focal point. Okay, so we're going to try that in the lab. One of the days that you're in the lab, you're going to try that and see if you believe me or not. All right, what about the last one here? What if now I move into between the focal point and the mirror, still standing in front of the mirror, look at this, okay? Parallel from our object, reflects back through the focal point. A line goes through the set curvature, reflects straight back. And now, how do you figure out where those reflected rays meet? I take this reflected ray, I project it using a dotted line behind the mirror. I take my other reflected ray, because you need two rays in order to show where they meet. I reflect it back behind the mirror following the same line and where those two meet is the top of where my image is going to be, okay? Anything behind the mirror should have a dotted line. 
I can't draw my little stick figure guy with dotted line, but if you can on paper, could you do that? Because that would be most correct. My little guy's head is now here, and now how do you describe that image? Okay, what's the size of the image? Is it the same size, bigger or smaller? It is bigger. Attitude, upright or inverted? Upright. Location, behind the mirror. And what about the type of image? Real images are in front of the mirror. Virtual images are behind the mirror. Is this a real or a virtual image? Virtual. Very good. Okay, now you're going to go through and work through this on your own. Basically, you're summarizing the converging mirrors here in the table. More information on the acronym. And then you're going to be doing some homework questions right here. Okay, second part of this is then going to be finishing up and a few more homework type questions. Whenever you're given an object, it's a good idea to look at where the top of it is compared to the bottom. And in this case, I've got a little stick, put a little dot on it or an arrowhead so that when you're drawing your images, you've got a top and a bottom so then you can tell if that image is inverted or um, upright. Okay, you're going to finish up these ones, and then I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to show you how to do the diverging ones in a minute. Okay, so go ahead and try those. Good luck.